Hey everybody, welcome back. We are back in the basement and we're putting together the governor for the 1927 John Deere D. Um, this won't be the final final assembly, but we already did a dry run to make sure everything's fitting nicely. And um, we're gonna get the components inside the governor housing that need to be in there. Um, the reason why it's not the final final is because we are waiting on the fan shaft gear to come and we have to shim everything appropriately. So in order to be final final, <laughs> we have to have the governor assembly done. We have to have the front water pipe or the upper water pipe here. And we have to have the fan shaft assembly done and everything has to be kind of chalked up in a jig or blocked up so that it's sitting true and level. That way we can set the backlash on the gears and the heel, um, make sure the heel are the um, forward and back and side to side um, <laughs> adjustments, if you will. I'm trying to find the right word. The adjustments are, are correct. So um, let's jump into it. I'll, uh, I'll start by assembling the main shaft and gears into the case, and then we kind of have to work around. It's pretty tight to work inside there. Um, it's, not, it's not easy to get everything into this, into this governor case, but we made it happen once, we'll make it happen again. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we've got our governor drive gear. We've got our weights on and pinned appropriately. If you guys can see the cotter pin washer and the pin on the top side. Then we've got our, our sliding sleeve. Man, that works nicely. We've got our thrust bearing. Then we have our bevel gear. Then there's a spacer. And then there's a washer, a spacer washer that goes in front of that spacer. So that whole assembly will get put inside the governor case. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, this isn't, there's no good way to do this. Um, the, about the best way I've found is to tip the assembly down almost at a 90 degree angle to the case so that you can feed the shaft into the case. So we have this happening should look like that. Let's make sure this piece is all the governor weights are behind that, just like that. And I've already got the plunger in place. That is something that must be done before you even attempt to put this assembly in. I think we'll see. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to go off memory here. It's been a, a couple days since we put this together the first time. So that assembly is in. I'm just gonna put some gloves on here. The challenging part that I think we're, we're gonna have is, let's see, I need to have something that can hold this up. That'll work. The challenging part I think we're gonna have is getting the governor fork in place. Oh, got to get the thrust bearing in the proper position. Sorry, I know you can't see very well, but... That is there. Put the pin in for the shaft that... The pivot shaft for the governor fork. I'm just kind of watching it here. And I have to get my cotter pin. Now this is kind of the tricky part. You have to
That's kind of what I thought was going to happen. You have to kind of move things around so it's not in your way. Actually, I think I'm going to go the other way with this. It'll be easier to bend. I got to move the camera. Sorry, guys. Oops. Just like that. I got you guys glued to the... Okay. Trim the excess off there. Trim the excess off there. And I'll get it with a... Okay, cotter pin is in place. Just like that. Now, what we have to do is install the bearing carrier on the magneto side. And the way this is situated, so if you look at this carrier, you've got a there's a steel cup that goes in to the front side with the cup towards the inside. And then you've got a felt, then another felt, and then another cup that retains the felt from the inside. So then that inner cup gets put to the position of the cup towards the outside. And then outside of that you have a snap ring that keeps those uh, felt seal retainers in place. Then there's a, a shield, it's a thin, it almost looks like a washer, but it's a shield that protects the, the bearing from the snap ring. And then we can drop the bearing in place. Okay. And this is marked top, so you know which way it goes up. So, we're going to slide this in place. Oh, one other important detail. There's an oil reservoir or an oil catch on the top side. Make sure it's lined up with the top so it can't move obviously because it's cast as one piece. But make sure that that oil reservoir or that oil trough is towards the top side of the governor. Whoop. Before we even do that, let's get a gasket. Let's get a gasket. It's actually a shim. But let's try a let's try a thin one. Well, no, let's try a thick. We'll go with the thick because these are brand new gears. So we'll try a thick one. Okay. See, I'm I'm learning as I go. The first time I didn't. I didn't use any shims or anything when I put this together. So then we can put in our screws or our bolts rather. I don't have any lock washers on these yet, but I will. Again, this is all going to most likely have to come back apart to do the fit of the bevel and pinion gear for the fan shaft. So I'm not putting any sealer on it yet. I'm not putting any lock washers under the bolts because we just want to get this together for the sake of the video. So that is, oh, we got one more piece that needs to go on with the keyway or the key 
This key goes in place in the shaft. And then we have our magneto drive that slides on to the shaft with the key. And it's going to be a tight fit. because of the felts and there's a washer that goes on okay on the shaft here okay well I'm using a new washer that I had to drill the center out of. And now, <laughs> things don't always go to go the way you plan. I'm gonna go just kiss this with the drill bit again to uh, make sure that that's a nice tight, not tight, but a nice fit on the shaft here. One moment. I can never do this in one take. Okay, so we've got our washer on. We've got our nut on there. Now we can flip it around and work on the other side. Let's use another thick shim on this side. Should go just like that. Now, the same goes for this retainer. There's a, a trough that goes towards the top that is supposed to catch oil. So our bearing goes into whoop, the front side or the outside of the retainer. We put that on the shaft like so. like that and then our three bolts whoop I'm sorry first the cover then the three bolts there's a gasket that goes underneath that cover but we're not going to worry about that right now washer nut just like that and then we have our bolts on this side And these shafts are a 9 16 18 thread. All these felts were soaked in oil before we installed them. So essentially, you can see how the governor operates here. As the tractor slows down, this collar moves out. So you, you would pull the throttle, well, push or pull the throttle to idle. I can't remember which way is which. But as you idle it down, it moves the plunger back, which allows these forks to move away from the thrust bearing which allows this to drift out on the shaft, which allows your weights to open up. And then as you pull, it puts pressure 
on the thrust bearing, which doesn't allow your weights to fly out as the governor spins around. Everything turns very smoothly, no binding. Which is good so that that's probably gonna do it there's not much to it it's just tight working space and difficult to get your hands in along with the <laughs> sorry I'm kind of looking around and losing my train of thought get your hands in along with all the components inside here so that's all there is to it. I just want to correct myself real quick here. <laughs> I think that when I said you were idling it down, the weights would be out. That's incorrect, I believe, in theory. Um, as the saying goes, when you're going balls out, that comes from the old steam engines. When you're, when you're at max RPM and your engine's under full load and the the governor balls or the governor weights are out, that means you're at max RPM under full load. So, going back to the principle on this, if you have your fork all the way back, that means your weights are going to be all the way out, which means you're going to be running full throttle. So as you slow the engine down, you know, you, you would pull on the too far. You would pull on the plunger, which would push on the pull on the fork, which would push on the thrust bearing, which would slide the sleeve towards the weights, which would idle the engine down. It would force the weights to idle the engine down and regulate it at an idle speed. So that should be it. It's a fairly quick video. It's uh, there's not much to it. The difficult part is getting the fan shaft and pinion gear and governor bevel gear shimmed appropriately and everything um, lined up correctly. That is the difficult part. That's where the trial and error comes into play. So we're going to go ahead and end with that. I'll get this video uploaded. It should be a, a pretty quick video. So hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next part of this series, which will be setting up the fan shaft and the pinion and bevel gears and shimming them appropriately. One, one quick note on that though, the way that you move this shaft side to side is similar to that of the GP. You can loosen this nut and tighten this nut and that will draw the shaft this way, which draws the bevel gear this way, or you can loosen this nut and tighten this nut and that will draw the shaft back this way thereby loosening the contact if you will between the bevel gear and the pinion gear shimming them also works but I believe you also have to use the positioning of this shaft itself as you can see there's some left to right movement already because I only have the nuts on there loosely so that's going to be uh, taken care of in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and thanks for wrenching with me. And as always, stay tuned. More to come.